Right, now I'm able to include this. Repayment of long-term borrowings. Repayment, therefore this will be an outflow. This is my calculation number 10. Include my brackets because this is an outflow. 24701. Look at this. 24701 and 24701. This is a repayment. We are paying, therefore, an outflow of my cash. Right. Now, let's refer back to our scenario. We are able to tick off these amounts because we have included this in our T account. Okay. Now, when we refer back to our statement of financial position, long-term borrowings, deferred tax. I need to transfer opening and closing balances to my deferred tax account. Therefore, when you look at calculation number 12, I've already transferred this for ease of reference, 3139, as well as my tax payable, Calc 13, 2441, 2149, and my shareholders for dividends, 5662, 5662. No movement. Let's take this off my statement of financial position to ensure that I have transferred this, 244. 214 and my shareholders for dividends 566 566 and i have transferred my short-term borrowings right now let's refer to the profit and loss immediately i'm able to identify i need to transfer my revenue and my cost of sales as well as my other expenses now let's transfer this to one and two right revenue on the left side Okay, so please look at this. In calculation one, because this is cash receipts, I choose to make use of a positive because this will be an inflow. Then in terms of calculation two, this is payments. Therefore, I choose to make use of a negative because this is an outflow. Just look at my signs, the positives and negatives. Yours might be the other way around, but then you need to keep in mind when you transfer this to your cash flow statement if you need to include brackets or not then remember in terms of your cash receipts we will need to determine our trade receivables movement and then in terms of our cash pay we need to determine our trade payables movement as well as our inventory movement i'm not going to do this just now this is just to include reminders to myself that i need to look at the movements Right, now I'm able to tick off cost of sales, revenue, other expenses. Right, I need to look at my finance costs. Look at this, 6890, immediately to the face of our cash flow statement. If you look at my cash flow statement, remember, as part of your template at the top, we have our cash received, cash pay. I need to transfer my calculation numbers. I have my interest received, interest paid, dividends received, dividends paid, and my income tax paid. Now, we are looking at, if I refer back, finance cost. This is an expense finance cost. This is an expense 6890. Yes, right. Now, I've transferred this. Therefore, let's take it off. Happy. Share of profit of associate. Yes, let's transfer this to our T account, investment in associate. This is from our profit and loss, sorry. I want to make use of black. From our profit or loss, 437. Take all 437. Income tax expense, 12254. If you think about the journal, we will debit the expense and we will credit the tax payable. Therefore, in our tax payable on the credit side, include my profit and loss. And this is an amount. I just want to get the amount here, guys. One, two, two, five, four. Right. And take it off. Owners of the parent. This is in our retained earnings. Sorry, I'm not going to use this now. NCI, yes, I need to transfer the NCI. I determined that I will have to determine the dividends from my NCI account. 1033 and my NCI increase on the credit side. 
Therefore, our profit and loss portion from the profit and loss statement, this will be 1033. And I've ticked it off. Now, let's look at the additional information. We've identified that we have profit on the disposal of our profits, plant and equipment, 255. We need to take this out. This is included in our profit before tax amount and we need to take this out therefore if you refer to our calculation number two our profit if we take it out we add this back it was a positive now this is a negative why do we need to take this out because we will have to determine what is the proceeds which should be included on the face of our cash flow statement therefore as a reminder i will refer to my cash flow statement and i will include proceeds on disposal of ppe when you look at the right side i know the profit portion provided is the 255 and if i remember correctly they have provided us with some kind of information note two right the proceeds from the disposal eight nine zero one hundred immediately i'm able to transfer this eight nine zero one hundred therefore i am now able to calculate my carrying amount that i need to take out remember they sold this portion therefore i need to take this out carrying amount of ppe sold you don't have to write this out but guys ensure that your market is still able to see where did you calculate this Minus the 255, and this will be an amount of 635. Right, we are able to tick off. We have used this amount. Now, let's just get back to our note one dividends received from other investments 655. We need to take it out because we need to indicate this on the face. Therefore, let's take this out. We have our dividends received, and this is an amount of 655. Remember, this was an income. Therefore, if we now need to take this out, we need to include our brackets, and we need to include this on the face. Dividends received. If we look at our dividends received line item, this will be our 655. And take off the amount then we have our fair value gain on financial assets held at fair value through profit or loss remember if this is a gain we debit the financial asset and we credit our profit and loss if we credit our profit and loss we need to take this out 225 therefore we take out the fair value adjustment and we need to transfer this to our financial asset because we are reconciling our financial asset we have a fair value adjustment two two five zero and we take it off right now allowance for credit losses written off if this is an allowance this will be on the debit side as an expense in our profit and loss therefore we now need to add this back we need to include this as a positive. We need to add back the allowance for credit losses. Therefore, a plus sign. Look at this, a plus sign. And we need to take this into consideration in our T account. Therefore, in our trade receivables. Because that is where we will include our allowance for credit losses. On the credit side, because we are allowing for possibility that there will be a loss and this will decrease our balance. Take that off, 5027. And now we have our depreciation. This is non-cash. We need to take this out. Therefore, if it's non-cash, we need to add this back. Depreciation plus 16007. And in our PPE account, this will be a reconciling item because this will form part of our accumulated depreciation, right? Therefore, on the credit side, we have our depreciation of 16007.
and we are able to tick this off. Then let's move on to our finance cost, total interest received, included in the finance cost, reflected in profit or loss. Now look at this, total interest received, included in our finance cost. Therefore, if this receivable is included in our finance cost, our finance cost is interest paid. We need to take this out, 2038. And this is interest received, therefore, 2038. Do you see? We're taking it out from the interest paid, and we include this in the receivable line item. 2038. Now, share of profit of associate. Okay, we have already included this in our investment in associate. Look at the investment in associate. We have debited that line item. Then the proceeds we have transferred and then it is estimated that 16.2 million of the plant acquisitions are investment in future operations. Therefore, immediately we are able to identify that this purchase of our PPE, which will relate to replacement. If we look at the information provided, guys, future operations. Therefore, you can either include this as additions or indicate that this relates to future operations and this is 16200. But important, we also need to include this in our T account and we know that there is purchases to the value of 16200. And we are able to take off that amount happiness next during the current financial year the acquisition of an associate we've already included the 77,000 then dividends 2354 were received from the investment in associate therefore on the face we received the dividends therefore we need to add this 2354 plus 2354 remember this is from our associate and in our T account, when we receive a dividend, it decreased the net value. Therefore, dividends, 2354. And let's tick this off, 2354. No financial assets were sold during the current year. The trade receivables include the following. It includes amounts accrued for interest receivable. Therefore, if you think about the journal, debit, Credit, so this will be interest received, and this will be our accrued account to the value of 90 and 90. Now, this is an opening balance, remember? Right now, our closing balance is 135. Therefore, we are able to identify that there is a movement to the value of 45. Okay, so if we look at our T account, we have our accrued interest. Just quickly want to include this and then I'm going to explain this. When you look at the journals on the right side of your screen, for 2020, the accrued interest journal will be to debit the accrued interest, the 90,000, right? And to credit our interest in our profit and loss. But do you see that this is not yet cash okay now the balance at the end of 2021 of the accrued interest should be 135000 therefore to give the 90000 to 135000 we have to debit that account with 45000 right you with me but this line item here, the credit in our profit and loss, is not yet an income. It's not yet cash. It's an income in terms of profit and loss, but it's not cash. Therefore, we will have to take this out from our interest received minus the 45,000. Now, we need to indicate how do we get to the 45,000, 135, triple zero minus the 90,000, right? And this is the 45,000. Therefore, we need to take this out because this is not yet cash, right? Okay, 
we're able to tick off our amount, we have transferred this. Then our note 6, we have already included in our T accounts. Note 7, trade payables include the following amounts. Now look at this, accrued interest expense. Think about your journal, debit the expense in your profit and loss and credit our credit to the accrued interest with the 371 and the 457 exactly as per the previous discussion except that this will now be the other way around provision for guarantees opening balance 2250 closing balance 3150 therefore how do we get from the opening balance to the closing balance we debit the expense and we credit the provision with the movement right but we need to take this into account in our trade and other payables t account